Welcome to the Light Home Sustainable Design podcast series. We talk with the architects and builders about green design and homes that really suit the way we love to live. I'm Amanda Faulkner. And today, I'm talking with architectural designer Rex Randall about why bricks are nuts in Perth. Well, this morning, I'm talking to uh, Rex Randall, who's in Perth, Western Australia, and he's built a home which he says is a little bit unusual for the Perth market. So, Rex, one of the things that you told us when you wrote into Light Home was that um, in brick, building in timber frame is unusual and that they really have this preference for double brick. So can you just talk to me about what that preference is based on? It's based from what I've gleaned. I've only been here 18 months, but from what I've gleaned, it's based on clever marketing from the brickmakers about 30 years ago who uh, promoted their bricks and uh, showed that they were solid and all the rest of it, and, and consequently the public has, has um, been convinced that it's the right material to use. But insulation-wise, it's, it's of no consequence, in fact. And the houses here in the winter get very, very cold. When I first arrived here, <coughs> excuse me, um, with the bedroom that I stayed in was, was cool enough in the summertime that I had to have the window open the whole time. But in the winter, the brick wall was like ice. and It, it was an internal wall. Um, so it's not a good medium to build with. And so what, what, is it about, what is it about brick that, that means that it really retains the, the cold and I guess also conversely <coughs> retains the heat when it's hot? Uh, I'm not sure what it is that actually causes it. Uh, I guess it's because there's not the, the aeration through it. Um, certainly with uh, aerated bricks you get a better value, um, R value out of them, uh, or aerated blocks in fact. Um, but they're a good heat source uh, if you want to use them as a trom wall or something like that, with actually you, you, you power sun towards them, and then it stores heat for like up to three days. Uh, you come from a climate where it also gets very, very cool, and um, lightweight construction works very effectively in that kind of environment. Um, so it should also work very effectively in Perth, shouldn't it? It should, yes. And it does, in fact. I, I have a uh, client that I'm working with at the moment, and this is... This is the mindset of Western Australians. It's really strange, but uh, she lives in a timber frame home. And she told me personally that her mother's house heats up in the, the 40 degree days, and it takes three days for the brickwork to cool down. Whereas she's in a timber frame home, and when, it, when the evening comes, she just opens the windows and the house is cooled in an hour. And yet she says she wants to build in double skin brickwork. With the home that you're, you, um, you've put into Light Home that we're going to be showing in a moment, um, you've kind of got a hybrid uh, construction, is that right? You've got double green downstairs and then you've gone uh, lightweight timber framed upstairs. Just talk us through why you've done what you've done with, with that home. The reason I've done that is, is, again, because of the mindset to try and um, get people to think outside the square and uh, those clients particularly were Western Australians, born and bred here, a um, young couple, and they felt that brickwork was the answer. Um, but I managed to convince them to look at timber frame, but if, if you see on that plan, there's actually not a lot of brickwork that's exposed to the north, it's to the south and the east, and um, I've got ventilation set up in that brickwork as well to allow good airflow through the building, which is imperative in a passive solar home. Um, and um, the reason we went to timber frame upstairs was firstly because I thought it was a better option and secondly because we were unable to actually provide uh, a concrete floor upstairs and um, uh, consequently you couldn't put brick on top of timber frame floors. So. And so what has been the client's reaction now um, you know, with the solution that you've proposed? Well that was interesting. I've never had this before, but they, they sat down and looked at the plan and they said, wow, we expected to change something and there's nothing we want to change. And then they took it away for the weekend and showed it to their family and friends and emailed me back on the Tuesday and said, there's still nothing we want to change. And I've never had that before, but um, I felt quite proud of the fact that I achieved something efficient that was, was uh, pleasing to the client at the same time. And so how did they respond to your uh, suggestion of using timber framing upstairs? 
Yeah, that wasn't a problem. They actually um, initiated it because they had seen a building um, close by where they live at the present um, that has a ply cladding to the outside, and they liked that idea when I mentioned um, timber frames. So there was a bit of a compromise there in their mind, I think, from to go to timber frame. Uh huh. And what cl cladding will you be using on the upper story of this home? We're going to use the ply in the same same manner. Uh huh. Hmm. And. Um, uh, you know, in your view, so leaving aside these clients, but in your view, particularly coming from New Zealand, where, as we say, there's so much timber frame and lightweight construction, um, and, and leaving, I guess, to one side consumers' perceptions about brick in the Perth market, I mean, you, you could um, build homes that were very suitable for the, for the climate in Perth completely out of lightweight construction, couldn't you? You could, yes. Yeah, and I've just um, completed an alteration for another client in fact, in Perth, it's a timber frame home, an old home. It would be the 50, 60 years old, I suppose. But in that instance, we've, we've added another um, pavilion, really, with a lounge and master bedroom and a connecting walkway from the existing house to that pavilion. But in that connecting walkway, I've built, even I've built the pavilion out of timber frame, and the pivot, in the connecting walkway, I've put a, a double skin brick wall internally. So it, receives the east and northern sun um, in the winter time and um, helps to radiate that heat out to keep the rest of the house warm. And, and typically, I think, you know, really um, that's where experts and like uh, the Your Home Technical Guide talks about this extensively, that typically, if your orientation is good, is that really the best place for that kind of thermal mass that's in the brickwork, isn't it, which is internally. Right. Um, and it sounds like in this, that situation you're able to use it for its ideal purpose, which is as a heat sink um, to heat up the place when it's, um, you know, natural, heat up the place with passive solar design, basically. That's right, yes. And that's what brickwork should be used for, used in conjunction with other materials rather than building the whole thing out of it. Because mm -hmm. I guess the upshot really is then, um, you know, in, in the situations that you were describing earlier on, you've got to actually spend a whole lot of um, uh, heating and cooling energy to heat that very big thermal mass, heat it up, and then over time it retains it, but then you've also got to cool it down, correct? Yes, that's right, yeah. yeah and we generally don't need to heat a room to maintain heat all the time because we're out of it for eight hours of the day, ten hours of the day. And we're only, when we get home, we're only using it for four or five hours. So we don't need it to be hot the whole time. Well, very best of luck changing those Perth perceptions, then. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>